Hello, everybody. Hello, Matt Nagels, Apparition, Rom, Weebo, Antra, and Guppy Force. I remember last time, uh, everybody was really, really hyped for what the part I was just about to start. But uh, for a little recap, last time we went, um, learned a lot more about Yasuda and her life as a servant. And uh, the first Beatrice being Gop, and Gop was able to quote unquote possess Yasuda's body. Now, that's really interesting to note because Shannon, who I think um, was, uh, I, I, I currently think Shannon was, um, is supposed to be a personality of Yasuda right now that they, she created, but this is the first time that Yasuda is, feel, is feeling like sh she's being pushed out of her own body and possessed by someone else. So now I'm trying to think like, what makes Shannon different from uh, Gop here? And I have a feeling like, yeah, as you guys noted, this Gop seems to be different from the Gop we know in that she uses Beatrice's speech patterns but not quite, uh, but still her own voice actor. So, it's like a, sort of like a hybrid between Gop and Beatrice. I'm still kind of flabbergasted over the fact that Gop is, has plays, playing such a key role in the storyline here. So I'm really interested in seeing how all the personalities and stuff work out and like how Shannon is different from Gop in that respect. Like, maybe they're on different levels, which would kind of make sense, considering how strong Beatrice was. Like, because if Beatrice evolved, in, in a way, from Gop, then... What? Then why is there a Gop again later on? So... Let's see. New days. That's where we were starting in the very middle of this chapter. So, yep. Again, please tell me if uh, sound settings are okay, if I'm sounding a bit too soft or too loud, or if the background voices and or music is too soft or too loud. All right, let's get back into it. That night, as I gazed at the ceiling from the bed in my dorm room, I looked at my hands. I couldn't sleep. The excitement from the time those keys danced was still there in my fingers. Is this how Beatrice, how witches, always feel? I have a friend who's a witch called Beatrice. Yep, somebody's got a witch friend here, absolutely. She always used to pull pranks on me with her strange magic. Because I saw this all the time, I thought I knew what magic was. But today, she had possessed my body and used magic with it. The sensation of magic that I finally felt at that time still held my heart entranced. See, that's really interesting. I want to know what's up with that. How is it different? Because clearly, there is a difference in level. Uh, I don't know how, what other way to say this between this Gop, Beatrice, and Shannon for uh, Yasuda. Well, we don't know if her name is Sayo. Sayo, for all we know, could be just uh, the name that, sh um, that she gave Shannon. So this is really interesting. It was a completely unknown pleasure. After all, by moving my fingertips, I could make the key dance as I wished. It was a strange, strange miracle of magic. Something humans could not do. See, this is super interesting. What does this entail? Like, what does this mean? I still couldn't let go of that excitement. Shannon, are you awake? Nani? Uh, what is it? A 
that's okay, G. John. Shannon was still awake. Shannon is always early to bed, early to rise. By getting to bed early, all of her weariness disappears by the next day. She lives a model life, one that all servants should respect and admire. If I want to become a loved, respected servant like Shannon, I'll need to act that way too. However, I wasn't confident that I could do that anymore. I guess I can't become like you after all. What do you mean? This is a bit abrupt. You were my ideal. Always. Mm. Yeah. Everyone in the Fukuin house loves you and is kind to you. Since you always played with me, you're the only friend I've ever had. And you're also a wonderful servant who can carry out any task in the Ushermia mansion both flawlessly and gracefully. Damn. She really looks up to you, Shannon. You were the target I longed to reach. That's what you were to me. Let's give it our all together. As they say, perseverance prevails. Everyone will go to acknowledge you more and more. So, let's need to become wonderful servants together. Oh, my God. Did Yasu just, just have a voice line? Whoa! That's insane! Holy shit! What? Oh my god! Wait, that's a- wait, holy shit! Wow, that- that's really abrupt! Oh my god. Okay, uh, crap. Um, my own voice? Or, damn, um, fuck. Uh, jeez. This was totally unexpected, so... Jeez. Hello, Vince. Hello, Joy. Welcome to the stream. Oh, welcome, Ji-chan. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God! Oh, what do I do? Ah, jeez. Fuck. Oh, God. Beatrice's voice actor. Really? Hello, Pika Blue. Okay. Oh, it's like a baby Tris voice. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hello, Night Crown. Oh my god. Welcome to the stream. I, I'm going to stop being a servant. Huh? <gasps> Yeah, it's the baby Tris voice. Oh my god! It, instead of a servant, I'd rather be a witch. Sayaka Ohara has so much fucking range. I could never tell what it's her because her range is beyond incredible. Hello, April. Welcome to the stream. Oh my god! This is a. Oh my. I am just blown away! They just did this for maximum effect, didn't they? This is something that you wouldn't even get in, like, the the original novel, because there were no voices. Ma what, what, what do you mean? Oh my god. This is beyond amazing. Yasuda is baby Tris! Oh my god. 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 Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello. Oh wait, welcome to the stream. Oh my god. Uh, 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 
What do you mean? Hello, bots. Welcome to the stream as well. What do you mean by which? みんなに愛されて頼りにされる使用人ってうん今ももちろん憧れるけど Oh my god Oh my god I did and still do Wish I could be a servant loved and relied upon by everybody でも今の私には魔女の方が憧れるの but right now, I want to be a witch. Even more! Well, that's... Uh... Huh? Shadow was confused. Yeah, this is where Yasuda becomes the badass Beatrice, slowly but surely. It was hardly surprising. All this about quitting as a servant was at least understandable. But then she she didn't know how to answer after hearing that her roommate wanted to become a witch. Majo. A witch? Beatrice! 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 Beatrice is the one that she wants to be. Isn't she? Oh my god. You see, today Beatrice possessed me and used my body to do magic. That unknown world felt so thrilling. This is exactly what I would do in this situation, honestly. It was much more thrilling than when I'd learned than when I learned I'd be selected as an Ushermia family servant. It was like learning about a whole new world. I'm sorry, that line just... <laughs> just brought back a very particular memory for me. As though I've been living in a world of darkness all my life, and thought I knew what the world was like. <sighs> then finally learned what light was, and saw the world for the first time. <laughs> It was joy, excitement, Beato would only use my fingers, made a key ring dance, and turned a key into a butterfly before hiding it in a locker. But I'd understood it with my body. If I'd moved my fingers a different way, the ring could have flown into the air instead of just dancing. <laughs> yep, I am a freaking nerd. Always have been, always will be. Big of Lou, that's absolutely true. <laughs> I could have turned it into a scurrying lizard instead of a butterfly. I could have done anything. True, Beatrice's magical power was still weak. It had all happened in the little world behind the backs of the servants, who were filled with anti-magic toxin. This is the first time of the toxin. However, inside that tiny, short-lived world, I could do anything at all. Beatrice just happened to settle on making them dance and turning the key into a butterfly. But if she'd wanted to, she could have done anything else. The endless sensation of that free, unrestricted power. I could still feel it in my fingertips. 
Could it be that along with that sensation, a fragment of that magical power might also remain? I can tell. It's still there. There's just still just a bit of it there, along with that sensation. I can do it. I can still do it. Uh, a single spot of golden light suddenly lit up this dark room. It was right between my clasped hands when I slowly opened them. I could see a single dot that sparkled gold. What is? Shannon didn't know what that light meant. How could light appear from the palm of my hands? And yet even with this miracle right in front of her, she couldn't understand what it was. She just sat there with her mouth open in disbelief. However, to me... This was just the return of that bit of sensation in my fingertips. The golden dot spread out and became a small gold butterfly. It flapped its wings and scattered gold sparks about like a cartoon fairy. To Shannon, it probably looked as though, just as though a gold butterfly was flapping its wings. Of course, that alone was a miracle that she could hardly grasp. But to me, it was like a remote control plane in the shape of a butterfly. Hello, Muffins. Uh, thank you for, for the sub. Thank you so much. I could control that gold butterfly however I wanted. Not clumsily with threats. I could make it flap, dance, play through the air as I wished. I was taking a walk through the air as that little butterfly. The golden glint of it pierced the darkness of the small room as it danced about freely. It was an entrancing pleasure. However, that sensation in my fingers began to weaken. I could tell that the few magic butterfly scales left in my fingers were going away. Finally, the gold butterfly flashed and turned to dust like a firework run out of juice. <laughs> Falling down and disappearing without a trace. <laughs> What on earth just happened? This is magic. It's really fun. Oh, it's desynced again. God damn it. Magic? Yeah. Magic. There was still some magic left in my fingers. So I was able to use it. But if I became a real witch, I'll be able to use it whenever and however I want. To do anything. Now that I've learned how fun this can be. I don't want to go back to being human. Being a servant is just too boring. So I'm going to become a witch! Damn it. Oh my god, this is so amazing! Oh my god. Yasuda is baby Triss. She's Beatrice the Younger. And Beatrice the Elder was that other one, that the god one. Unless somehow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Be become a witch. 
決めたのシャノン。Which? 今日まで楽しかった。I've already made my decision, Shannon. この部屋をあげるね。It's been fun. Oh wow, her voice is getting more confident. あなた一人で使って。I'll give you this room. じゃあね。You can use it by yourself. Bye. さようなら。Later. ま待って。Wait. Oh my god. As Shannon called out repeatedly for me to wait, a massive planetarium swallowed me up. In the sea of the pitch, pitch black starry sky, I was alone. I, we alone, are, al we are alone here. I'm done acting the part of the servant. Hmm. I'm going to modify this world. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! This is the Beatrice we all know and love. Woo! Oh my god, this is so amazing! Indeed, honey. Understood. In that case, what will you do? Being a wonderful servant like Shannon wouldn't be bad. But now that I know how fun it is to be a witch, that feels like a boring dream. I can't go back anymore. Yeah, the, the, it's desynctified one line. What will happen to Shannon? Shannon could just be Shannon and stay as a respected servant. She'll stay the same. But from now on, it be, won't be just the two of us together, but her alone. Their wells are sudden, honey. Is that not the phrase? Very well. Being fickle makes life more entertaining, honey. And what of you? I want to become a witch! I want to become Beato! But I already am Beatrice. You'll still be a witch and my friend. I'm I'm modifying the world so that Beato is me! Woo! Damn! Oh my god! Oh my god! Woo! Oh my god! Woo! Oh my god! Woo! Woo! Oh my god! This is so amazing! Oh my god! She's coming into her own! Oh my god! Beatrice is coming into her own! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is so to see her grow up like this. Oh my god. 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 Oh my god, you guys. Oh, what about us? Oh my god. That surge of confidence. Welcome, Golden Fantasia. Oh my god. So, I'll be a witch who's a friend of Beatrice. Hell yeah, you will, Gop. Pretty much. Wow. 
わかった。So from now on, you're a different witch. では、わらわの新しい名前は何とする ?I understand. Then what will be my new name? ふさわしい名前が思いつくまで掘りにする。しばらくはなしで。I'll put that on hold until I can think of one. ごめんね。You'll be nameless for a while. よいよい。Sorry about the trouble. せっかくの名前だ。Not at all, not at all, honey. 実行してもらわねば困るというもの。This is my precious name we're talking about. <laughs> You'd better take your time and think carefully about it. あなたはベアトリーチェが幼く。まだ魔法が使えない頃からの友人。私のものを隠したりして、からかっていたことが、縁の始まり。You've been Beatrice's friend since she was young and couldn't use magic yet. なるほど。When we first met each other, you'd always hide my things and make fun of me. それがやがて、魔法に目覚めたベアトリーチェの対等な友人となるわけか。Uh, I see. では、わらわは。少しお姉さん的な立場の友人であるな。Oh my god, this is incredible! Who would have known that Gop was first? And when Beatrice finally learns the ways of magic, I become a friend on equal footing with her. そんな感じ。Perhaps that would make me a sort of big sister to you. 喋り方、どうしようかな。Yeah, that sounds nice. ベアトリーチェの一人称はわらわですっかり馴染んでしまったな。What are we going to do? What are we going to do about how we talk? そなたに譲るか Beatrice's... Beatrice's voice is that of a woman of high station. <笑> oh, that was, that was Gop, sorry. Beatrice's voice is that of a woman of high station. Shall I give that to you as well? Warawa to you, Kotobazukaiwa. What a silly kiss. Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, she's gonna get her badass voice too! <laughs> yeah! Hmm. What got that? I'll inherit the way she talks. ではわらわもいやいやこれからはわらわではないの Indeed, honey, I comprehend. 私もベアトリーチェの姉的立場である魔女の友人にふさわしい喋り方を探しておくことにする。Or perhaps I shouldn't say it like that. I'll need to find a good way to sound like Beatrice's big sister like witch friend. いや Yeah, or should it be? <laughs> Indeed. なかなかの貫禄。私の、あいや。Now there's a nice dignified voice. わらわの容姿はどうしたものか。Okay then. How about no wait? そうだな。Then what of my appearance? This is beyond amazing. A good point. I've got a sort of blood wet red witch look. Beatrice was at night of the festival. She used to wear a red dress to hide her face. Why not choose a different color for yourself, honey? やはり亡霊といえば白がイメージか。When Beatrice wanders the mansion at night, she's often seen dressed in white. 白いドレスの魔女。Yes, I suppose ghosts are classically white. A witch. イメージをまとめてみる。Oh, a witch. In a white dress. Let's try putting it all together. I need a different look than the witch in the demon red dress. A white noble witch. Unlike the time with the red witch, I'm thinking about my own look now. 
Holy shit, like she is literally how badass. She is literally Oh my god, that is so adorable. Oh, oh Yasuda. Oh, you want to be hot? Oh, I know that feeling. Oh, definitely, absolutely. So I'd like to make it beautiful and cute if I can. A white dress, a noble look. Like one of those, like one of noble blood, but with a dark, sarcastic streak. Oh my god, Yasuda. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, this is amazing, you guys! Oh my god! No, she's like a tomboy princess, so her voice is a mix of formality and, rude and rudeness. <gasps> Yasuda! Oh my god! Claire. Claire, Claire! Then the dress should be the exact opposite to make a nice contrast. Then what of this form? Is it the form of the new Beatrice? How beautiful! Like a noble princess. <laughs> I've taken a liking to this form. Oh my god, Claire was. Oh my god. Claire! Are you fucking kidding me? Beatrice slash Claire is literally the face that she wants to be. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> this will be quite satisfactory. Not, not bad, honey. You look great, Beato. <sighs> I like it. I truly do like this form. Now, honey, if you can keep this up and give me a wonderful name, that'd be great. If I have to get around nameless for too long, I'll get all sulky. Fear not. Oh my god, oh, she's so adorable! Fear not, I shall find you a splendid name! But first, there is something I must consider. What shall be the form of my magic? Damn it, it's hard to guess who's talking now with this thing. Jeez. I think this was her talking. Hiding objects and transporting them instantaneously is your theme. So I must think of my own particular theme of magic. Oh my god! She is literally creating her own magic! Oh my god, jeez. This is amazing! We are witnessing the birth of the creation of Beatrice! Of Yasuda becoming Beatrice! 
This is beyond incredible. When I use magic, gold butterflies will flit about. <laughs> Sticky, ne? I'm not backing down on that part. <laughs> Perfect. That really would make you a golden witch, honey. <sighs> then the weaknesses such as spider webs and sacred mirror in the shrine will also go to you. Oh, Claire! Oh my god, she's like Beatrice's prototype! Oh my god! Oh my god! Indeed. Even an all powerful witch needs a few small weaknesses to keep things interesting. Wow, Yasuda's being a good rider here. Then let us do it like so. If I touch a spider web, it will burn me. Silently, a silvery spider dropped down vertically. Beato, now in her new form, lightly touched the silver spider web that trailed out behind it. As she did, there was a faint sound of flesh burning, and a thin burn was left across her fingers. Beatrice can't stand spider webs. That was one of the weaknesses of the evil spirits Kumasawa-san spoke of. Since the witch Beatrice had revived thanks to the power of those evil spirits, she'd also inherited their weaknesses. Therefore, sacred mirrors are another one of my weaknesses. However, that sacred mirror in the shrine isn't too likely to appear in front of me often. That's not so fun. Then, while mirrors with sacred power will obviously be a weakness, let us make mirrors themselves a weakness too. You often hear that mirrors have magical powers, honey. Isn't that nice? Sounds just like a witch. If I look at a mirror, it feels as though my magical power is being sucked out, so I shall try to avoid them. Indeed, that could be quite amusing. If I really think about it, I'm bad with mirrors whenever I make whether I make that rule or not. Damn, Beato, Yasuda. Oh my god. Oh god. Damn. Hashtag relatable. Oh god. Yasuda. Are you. You're. You're. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could hug her right now. Oh god. Oh god. No matter who I want or strive to be. The only face that will ever show in a mirror is the heartlessly pathetic and realistic face of Yasu. There are ways, Yasu, to, to, to change that, you know. Yasu, Beatrice. Yeah. I totally know how you feel. Oh god. Mirrors which always force me to face my shabby reality 
are something I always want to avoid. That's right. I hate mirrors. I don't want to see. My pitiful self. I do remember that, Chrono. Welcome to the stream, by the way, and also Olive and Ruka. Welcome to the stream, and James. Oh god. Yasuda, I wish I could hug you right now, seriously. You don't need to decide everything at once, honey. It's fun to build up a world one little bit at a time. True. I understand. I shall enjoy life as a witch as I slowly expand my world. That tiny dark room is no place for you to sleep now. In Indeed! I am the Golden Witch! How the fuck yeah! I am the ruler of Rokunjima's night, and the nighttime mansion belongs to me! Woo! That is where I should make my home, is it not? Woo! A room for Beatrice! <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Yes! That's right! That wonderful room on the second floor of the mansion! The VIP room of the witch's house to be Beatrice's room! Oh, that's right! From this evening forward, that room in the nighttime magic shall be my dwelling place! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that myself? <laughs> Sorry, Ramta, I just kind of got carried away there. Ah, uh, then let's go, Beato. So if we're going to drink tea together, we'll need a much better room than that cramped one. Indeed. That room is too crude for entertaining friends and serving tea. We shall change rooms. Let us go, my friend. So, this is goodbye to Shannon. When I looked at my feet, I could see my own dorm room far beneath me. I could see Shannon, who had dashed up to the bed I lay on, and had been saying wait at the two moment time froze. She was as rigid as a doll. Sarabada, Shannon. Looking down at it from this height, it really did look like a small dollhouse. So long, Shannon. The days I spent as a human, with you as a goal and a constant comfort, were truly fun. If I had never learned the joys of magic and awakened as a witch, everything would have doubtless remained as it was. I was your only close friend, too, wasn't I? 
Please forgive me for erasing that friend so suddenly. As a parting gift, I will erase me from your world. Oh my god, all the questions I had last time are being answered. Oh my god! Oh my god! you guys oh my god oh my god this is the greatest chapter ever oh well, not as great as the wedding and shit but like oh my god oh my god this is incredible Woo! as a parting gift i'll erase me from your world starting now this will not be a two-person room it will be a single person room with just you in it I hope you continue to strive for your ideal and try to become a kind, reliable servant loved by everyone. <sighs> Yasu, the stupid, clumsy servant who lost things all the time, doesn't exist anymore! <gasps> oh my god! So long, Shannon! When I mature as the witch Beatrice and stride through the nighttime mansion where I will, I may bump into you as you do your nighttime rounds. However, when I meet you again, it will not be a reunion. It will be our first meeting. After all, that you, though you have heard the rumors of the witch Beatrice, you have never met her. Woo! So long, Shannon. Let us meet again sometime, and spin up some fun tale. Mate! <gasps> Wait! Ma! Wait! Wait! Okay, so the desync is finally gone. Oh my god, okay. Oh my god, you guys! Oh my god. What was I doing? Was I talking in my sleep? This is amazing! This is amazing! Oh my god, the scene! The scene, you guys! Oh my god, you guys! This was the most amazing! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Hello, Uchiha Shadow, by the way, I didn't see before. Oh my god! And oh my god, bats! Oh my god! 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 Do you, what, 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 what we just saw! We just saw the true maturation from Yasuda into Beatrice! Oh my god! 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 Oh, you guys! Oh my god, I can't believe what we just saw! Oh my god, I'm like, I've been that point of my battle truck! Yes! Oh my god, that was amazing! Oh my god! 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 And that's it. That was the biggest thing. Every question has been answered just now. Basically every question. Oh my god. Yasuda. She did it! She made her original personality truly become a witch. And she left Shannon to be the main body. Oh my god. Oh my 
god. Oh my god. Apparently I have gotten out of bed, stretched my hands out towards it, and said, wait. This isn't the first time I've woken up to find myself saying something strange, but... I don't remember ever waking up to find myself out of bed and standing up. Could this be what they call sleepwalking? Am I just tired? Gotta sleep. Gotta get back to sleep. I turned around to face my bed. My bed wasn't there. There was no bed in this room except the one I just turned my back on. And even now, like, they still have the mystery of magic. Like, seriously. Like, as you guys mentioned in the comments, people with uh, GID are normally not able to do this kind of thing. Like, literally able to create and control their, like, their altars at will like this. So, this is like, Yasuda is just... Like, seriously. Oh my god. I'm just like, basically erase Shannon's memory. Okay, bye Golden Fantasia. Thank you so much. Uh, for coming here for this moment. Oh my god. What a scene! What a scene! Oh my god! If I'm the only one in this room, and the only bed is the one behind me, that must mean it's my bed. That feels wrong for some reason. The bed sheets are all disarranged, as though someone had slipped out of them. Who did? There's a single person room with me in it, right? So that there is my bed, and the traces of someone crawling out mean that I was just sleeping there until a second ago. That for some reason, that bed doesn't feel like my bed. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I'll message, uh, I'll message all y'all later. Oh my god. However, though all the other kids shared rooms, I, Shannon, was given a single person room. So there's only one bed, and it must be mine. Uh, am I just tired? I wonder. I must just be half asleep. School starts early tomorrow morning. And when school ends, I want to go to the mansion, help out with some work. And talk to Kumasawa-san about the mystery novel I just read. Time to sleep. I'm probably just so worn out that I'm imagining things. Good night, Shannon. Well, that's not something someone would normally say to themselves. Just crawl in bed and close your eyes. And you won't have to think about anything complicated. I went back into my bed. It felt a bit uncomfortable to crawl into a bed that wasn't mine. Still, it might just be because I'm getting so sleepy, but it's starting to feel as though this is not is this is my bed after all. I'm just half asleep. I am Shannon. A lonely servant. I mess up from time to time, but I want to become a kind servant whom everyone loves. Oyasumi. Good night. Watashi. Me. Oh. Oh my god, you guys. Honestly, I have to say that was probably my fi one of my favorite scenes in the entire in the entire novel. HELL 
Oh, I am one yet many! I've had enough of playing the servant! I've had enough of being human! From this night forth, I am Beatrice! The golden witch Beatrice, who has lived for a thousand years! Praise me, servants! Have fear who you when you are chosen for the night shift. In the nighttime mansion, everything is mine, for that is my time. Woo! Oh my god! Oh, I am one yet many. Yes, let our world swallow up everything. It is like the raging seas. Well now, let us drink the mysterious moon dry tonight with this human book as a side dish. Woohoo! You call this a mystery? You call this a closed room? This song, this music! You call this a crime impossible for humans? Don't make me laugh! With all the, these holes and weak points, you call this a crime impossible for humans? Is there no splendid closed room magic that can do my name justice? <laughs> this music is amazing, oh my god. No, not here, not here, not there, not there either, all of them pathetic! <laughs> It's enough to make one giggle, but now I'm not sure which is the side dish, the moon or the book. If I get tired of mystery, I can change myself into a butterfly. I can flit about the island, the mansion, the vast forest at will. I'll follow these cowardly servants as they do their nighttime rounds. And when they check to see that a window is locked, they'll see me laughing at them in the reflection on the glass. I can be fickle and do as I please. Pranks at night should be a lot of fun. <sighs> okay, I've decided. Let's play like that starting tonight. <laughs> How amusing. What amusement this night shall bring. In the world of witches, the only limits to your fun are the limits of your imagination! My imagination shall not become the source of my magical power! Splendid! It should all be so fun! Oh, here we go! I shall expand it infinitely! And let it swallow the whole island. The island's night will be all mine. Oh, how refined and pleasant are the days of a witch. Oh, how refined and pleasant are the days of a witch.
Oh, I am one yet many! Here's to the Here's to the wonderful world of witches! I love you so much. Oh God, I know exactly how Yasuda feels. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm telling you guys. This story makes me feel ways. Seriously. This story makes me feel ways like I just <sighs> uh, especially Beatrice I don't know she just makes me feel alive really I know that's really corny to say but this is this is reminding me of how I felt at the end of episode one like when Beatrice first appeared. I just... Jeez. I... I am never for gonna forget this story as long as I live, really. This is probably one of my favorite chapters in the entire story. It is up there. It is up there. With the end of episode five and the wedding and and just like, uh, like, and like that whole chapter where she returned last episode. I gotta say, I, <laughs> oh, truth and falsehoods, I just, Really, it's a lot of personal stuff for me, really. I don't know. I don't know if other people would feel this way about Uminako. It's just... For, like, this story hits so many personal chords for me. Like, in ways that I just... I never would have ever thought. I, I just...
so I, I, I really don't know if, if other people would feel the same way as I do about this, but thank you so much for writing this story, Ryukushi. Seriously. Really, Weibo? Wow, that is fascinating. I feel the same way, kind of. I... <sighs> I... <laughs> Hello, Vids. Welcome to the stream. I... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find better words than just... I, I, how much I love this story. <sighs> just... <laughs> Beatrice makes me feel all kinds of ways. I... And just being able to read out her lines with you guys just makes it even more special to me so thank you all for being there seriously that's okay rom as i said everybody has a different experience you know that's totally fine everybody's experience is valid you know that's totally fine All right, let's get back to the story. I just, that whole section was just beyond amazing for me. I'm, I'm just, I just need to get that out there. Did, did you check the bathroom amenities? Hi, list on the list. Hello, Jim Chad. Welcome to the stream. Oh, there's Mammon! Hello, Mammon! Oh my god, we finally see Mammon! Jeez, Mammon didn't even know Yasuda back before she became Beatrice. Yup, went down the whole list. Did you make sure they were facing the right way when you set them down? Yes, of course. Everything's as the list says. <laughs> Thank you. Genji-sama, their costumes are ready now. Good work. Make sure you check over everything with your own eyes, Shannon. Oh my god. Shannon was probably... Yasuda's original servant name, wasn't it? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, so that means Yasuda's first name is probably Sayo, isn't it? Because the name is based on their real name. Oh my god. Also, Madam has ordered us to change the tablecloth in the dining hall again. My, my, why again when we all worked so hard to change it earlier today? 
The color of that tablecloth simply does not fit. Once I saw it against the backdrop of the room, I could see that it matched terribly. We should use a different tablecloth. Oh, make sure to clean the chandelier in the parlor. There's a Natsuki's whole rivalry with Eva. I don't want to Eva san looking up and saying, Oh, is that dust? Even, even a spiderweb again. Do not worry. It has already been carefully cleaned and checked. I will now perform a final check on everything myself. Is that so? Very well. I will also check everything over at the very end. And now they're calling her Shannon. Shannon? Take the young servants and prepare a new tablecloth. <laughs> Try to find something white, with a bit of a, more of a clean feeling. Uh, <laughs> yes, as you wish. Natsuki was even more high-strung than normal, and walked about barking orders here and there. Even though the sky was beginning to get, get to get to get dark, the servants moved hurriedly about. Tomorrow is the annual family conference. It isn't particularly rare for each of the individual, if, uh, individual families to visit the island, but this is the only time that they all come together. It was the most important day of the year. Oh my god! Oh my god! I think I know what's gonna happen! Oh my god! Oh my god, is she gonna meet Patler? Oh my god, and George. Oh my god, oh my god. This is the important day of the year for both the Ushimiya family and Rokunjima. Natsuhi, who was short-tempered on top of being high-strung, kept ordering that the servants redo this or that, since they really didn't look good after all. This would keep them going till late into the night. Now that Shannon had many years of experience, and Natsuhi had put her in a position of responsibility. She was called over many times to have strict orders sh showered on her. So, when Shannon finished her shower and lay down on the bed in the servant waiting room, she fell asleep almost immediately. I can hear the sound of wind coming from somewhere far away. It's a bit different from the sound wind outside a room would make. It's almost as though I'm sitting in a deck chair in the rose garden, turning over in my sleep with the feel of the wind in my hair. That's right, the feel. This isn't a sound, it's a feeling. Then this is a dream? Just as I was about to accept this theory, I thought I heard someone talking to me. My, my. It seems the work of a servant is just as boring as it ever was. Not only boring, but difficult, strict, constraining, joyless. All you get in return for your years of service is some level of respect from the newer servants. And even that is far from sufficient to repay you for all the hard work you've done. Why do you not tire of this life? Huh? Who? She wasn't just imagining someone talking to her. She was shocked to find that it was real. When Shannon opened her eyes, she gulped. The Golden Land. Uh, this place. 
damn, Beatrice has been busy. She couldn't say any more. She was literally stunned silent. Shannon, who had been sleeping on a bed, was somehow in a rose garden. However, though this rose garden somehow resembled the rose garden on Rokunjima, it was also completely different. After all, the roses were golden. And it wasn't just the flowers, but the dancing butterflies, too. It was a golden rose garden of mysterious beauty. Somehow, Shannon was sitting in a chair under the arbor. It was as though she'd taken a nap there and woken up from a dream. But it felt strange. Is this golden rose garden a dream? For some strange reason, it felt as though my entire life up to this point had been a dream, and that I had finally awakened here. Welcome, Shannon. Welcome to my golden rose garden. There was that voice again. Shannon looked around to find who it was. As she did, a golden butterfly landed on the seat across from her and instantly created a human form. There's Claire, Beatrice! It has been quite some t time, Shannon. Have you been well? Of course, I know you have been. After all, I've been watching all of you every day. This woman laughed as though she was an old friend of Shannon's. However, Shannon obviously didn't remember this strange gold rose garden, and she didn't remember this person's face either. Indeed. She erased Shannon's memory. You no longer remember me, do you? Have I forgotten about you? If so, please forgive me. There is no need to apologize. I'm the one who did that in the first place. <laughs> I made you that way, so it is no sin of yours. Let me introduce myself. I am the Golden Witch, Beatrice. And she has a little gold butterfly right there on her arm thing. Oh my god. Beatrice the benefactor of the Ushimiya family, whom the master always speaks of? Uh, no, no, no. Not that Beatrice. THE Beatrice! I am the Golden Witch, the one who rules over Rokunjima's night! I am the other master of the mansion, the one you always pay homage to. You are Beatrice-sama? You need not fear. The two of us used to be friends. Uh, no, roommates, did we not? Well, you erased my memory, so... At one time, I idolized you and tried to be the best servant I could. Amazing! Amazing! Beatrice is the original personality! Unbelievable! I've always had a single 
person room, so I couldn't have had a. When we last parted, I stole away your memory. However, I have not forgotten that we were once roommates. I also, I also remember that I was the one who destroyed our friendship and left. So as not to leave you alone in sadness. I erased all of your memories and the very world of our days together. This is unbelievable. Like, this is clearly not just DID. If you want a completely non magical interpretation of these events, because frankly, I'm back at the point where it's getting hard to interpret the the events of what's happening without magic. And like, I just, uh, damn. Like, cause isn't in DID like a lot of it where they're not supposed to be able to control what's going on with their individual personalities. And like, to be able to control like, what the other personalities have memories of, like... It's, it's, like, be able to erase memories. I just... I... Holy shit, jeez. Oh. <sighs> 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 You do not need to understand. But believe this. I have not called you here to do you harm. It is a magic scene, but I imagine they're just having a conversation. Uh, isn't this inside one of my dreams? You may think of it that way. Strictly speaking, I beckoned your soul to my garden while you were sleeping. To invite you to be a resident of this world. Beatrice snapped her fingers. Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the streams. And a storm of gold butterflies all rose up around the rose garden. As the cloud of butterflies danced over the table, a gorgeous tea set appeared. There were teacups and a teapot, more elegant even than those used by the Ushirmiya family. The tea was filled to the brim and had a sweet rose scent, one which shattered and never smelled before. Before there was even time to be amazed by that scent, butterflies started gathering one by one on the table, and a tea stand sprouted right out of it. It was like watching a magical mushroom from a fairy tale kingdom grow out of the ground. It was a many-layered tea stand, filled with beautiful cakes, like edible jewels. Of course, there were also several lovely light brown scones. The honey truly was golden honey, with bits of gold leaf dancing through it. It seems the Ushirumiya family holds tea parties from time to time, but those cannot compare to mine. <laughs> Incredible! 
things. I I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> Even if you did, it would only have been as a waitress. You are my friend. I need no waitress. After all, I am a witch. And that is more than enough. Come, do not be shy. Stuff yourself to your heart's content. Thank you very much. Oh, holy shit. Whoa. That was Shan, all Shannon managed to say. It would be hard for anyone to say much more after being suddenly invited to such a beautiful witch tea party. Let us begin with black tea. The milk is fresh, and the sugar is so delectable that you'd almost want to eat it raw. But I recommend you try your tea straight first. With nothing more than a single rose petal floating on the top. It will surely be so delicious that you'll be unable to drink the black tea of the human world ever again. Laughing happily, Beatrice opened not a sugar pot, but a rose petal pot, picked up a single crimson petal, and floated it on her tea after relishing in its scent. Shannon did the same, picking up a single petal and smelling its aroma. Oh, it smells so wonderful. Is this really the scent of the roses in this world? I am glad you enjoyed it. I bred this rose simply for the purpose of using the petals with black tea. If you crush them, they're also splendid for making jam. And that goes better with scones than anything else imaginable. Do you want to try? Oh, oh my god. I love this sweet Claire Beatrice. Uh, sure, just a bit. Shannon had been invited to his witch tea party suddenly. However, the witch seemed so truly innocent, and her smile as she played the hostess was so happy that it made Shannon want to smile too. The tension in Shannon's heart gradually faded, and she started to enjoy her chat with the witch. Oh my god. Servant work really is tiring. I remember it well. Particularly cleaning the window sills in the chapel. How surprising! So you worked as a servant once too? For a short time. You probably don't remember, but I worked alongside you. I was a clumsy fool who always lost things. You were my idea of a perfect servant, and the person I looked up to. Oh, that makes me even more sorry that I can't remember. There is no need for apologies. Here you are not a servant, but my friend and guest. There are no inconveniences here. No trials, no boredom. 
I can give you anything you desire. And that is how much power I currently possess. I wanted to let you know that I have now reached that level. This is so amazing! Oh my god, Yasuda, I am so proud of you! Oh my god! Oh my god! Wow, she became so strong! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm truly grateful to you for welcoming one with such so few redeeming features in such an extravagant way. Oh god, Shannon, you are lovely. Don't you dare say that about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Think of, think of it as a reward for all the painful days you have withstood. Come, gold butterflies. Don't let, don't, get my, let, don't let my friend get bored. Show her a little dance. When you are tired of that, let me to call the band to perform any song you would like. Oh, oh my god! This is so wholesome. When you are tired of that, my refined familiars will show you some con conjuring tricks. Fear not. For time is endless here. Yasuda, Beatrice truly has an endless imagination. And you're endlessly beautiful and endlessly amazing. And endlessly badass and cool. And I can grant your wishes endlessly. My tea party has no end. In a truly good mood, the witch told Shannon several strange stories. They were all stories Shannon had never heard before. Very interesting stories. And yet they were all odd, bizarre fairy tales. Shannon felt as though she had become Alice in Wonderland. The time she spent at this tea party was strange, pleasant, and relaxed. No, the clocks have no hands at this tea party. So time passed like a Sunday morning when you can wrap yourself in your blanket for as long as you want. I can't express how grateful I am to you for all of this. There is no need for thanks. In the human world, words of thanks go along with words of farewell, do they not? There will be no end to this tea party. So there is no need for thanks either. <laughs> huh? I'll still thank you. Thank you so much, Beatrice-sama, for this wonderful tea party. But all dreams must end, and so is this one. Oh. Oh. I love this face. And why must they end? Because I start early tomorrow. If I stay here talking too long, I'll sleep in. And Madam will give me a good scolding.
ざ短期な夏日のいる世界へ帰りたがるというのか。Why are you so anxious to return to the world of that short-tempered Natsuhi? いやいや。Really now? どう多くして何のねぎらいもない人間の世界へ。なぜにわざわざ帰ろうというのか。Are you truly saying you want to return to the human world? Where it's all work and no rewards. But I am a human. It's my demo. I can't impose myself on you forever. Shannon. Shannon. It seems that you do not understand. I invited you here, but I have no desire to chase you away again. So, this is how she's a thousand years old. She probably spent a lot of time. That is insane to think. Like she could do time compression like that. Here, time is eternal. You are not obligated to say farewell. Not ever. I will never tire of enjoying tea with you. On the contrary, it is quite agreeable to have you here to talk to. Very interesting that Shannon is calling herself a human and not a furniture. I think that's really interesting. Huh. Why do you want to return to that colorless world? Will you waste all your time with school and your job and the family works you to the bone? Despite all that, it's still my world. Shannon. Shannon. So no yona sekaiga. So nata no sekai de aru hitsuyo ga aru to yu no ka. Does that sort of world really need to be yours? Let me be honest with you. Shannon? I didn't invite, just invite you here. I came to take you home. Take me home? Once I tried to become a good servant like you. Then I became fascinated by witches. And became one myself, learning all the pleasures of magic. And now, I have come to take you home. Beatrice spoke quietly and slowly rose from her seat. Shannon. Shannon. The world of witches truly is more fun than being a servant. Oh my god, you guys, you're right. Beatrice loves Shannon so much. She wants to take her home. She wants to open Chikari, Shannon. Oh my god. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> Hello, T2, swag into the stream. Hello! Oh, that doesn't work with the Beatrice voice. This tea party is nothing more than a mere welcoming party for an old friend. We can hold as many fun festivities as we desire. 
That is the endless, the eternal. Now that this golden rose garden has been completed, I have reached my goal. This place is paradise. And not the golden land. Interesting. Yes. Let us call it the golden paradise. Now that it has been completed, I've come to welcome you in. There's no need for any inconveniences, any perseverance or hard work. There, that, there's that phrase again. I can't believe that phrase has become something in the story. Oh my god. Here, you and I can enjoy ourselves for all eternity. It will be like a never ending fairy tale. I'm truly thankful for your splendid proposal. However, I need to go back to the original world. Why? Because this isn't my world. Uh oh, here we go. Uh oh. I acknowledge it. This is not the world you've lived in until now. That's why I've invited you here. From this point forth, this will be our world. You are no longer a guest. You are the second master of this world. You need show no restraint for my sake. We'll just live in this endless world like we once lived as roommates. I, I regret that I have no memory of that time. However, I'll have to turn down your invitation. Well, can't you just give her her memory back of that time then? Why? What, respon what responsibility forces you to return to the world of humans? Too, the world of humans, or the world of servants, is busy all the time. Madam is strict, high-strung, and has a short temper. It'd be a lie if I said the everyday chores weren't a pain, and having to balance work with school makes it even harder. Beatrice had watched over Shannon's painful days the whole time. She had seen those constantly tired shoulders heave and sigh, and a sigh over and over. That was why she had invited Shannon here, to this golden paradise. She had tried to give Shannon a perfect welcome, to truly make her happy. So why had Shannon selected her original world over this one? Beatrice was overcome with shock and completely unable to understand. I have given you the perfect welcome to this paradise. And the days to follow will be even more fun. So 
So, since you still choose the human world over all of that, do you find something that there is even more fun than... There, that's something there that is even more fun than the pleasure of witches. That's right. There are things in the human world that are even more fun than magic. Absurd. That cannot be. Yes. It's true. Shannon's expression was soft. However, her words were firm. There was something wonderfully fantastic in the human world. And that, and that something was apparently not in this paradise, where everything was supposedly just as they wanted it. Absurd. I don't understand. As Beatrice muttered, she shifted, she shifted restlessly several times. However, no matter how often she said it, Shannon's smile didn't falter, and Beatrice couldn't think of an answer. In that case, it's time for me to leave. Ocha, Your tea was delicious. I don't understand! I am the great golden witch, the one who can have anything endlessly! You, you tell me that I could not give you what you want! Yes. I want to know! I believed I had everything. So tell me what it is I lack. I bet I know what it is. It's gotta be love. I think that you already know. Isn't that why you invited me here? Or friends or something like that. It's either love or friends. Are you trying to speak in riddles to a witch? That's all for now then. I can't live here, but I'd be glad to come over whenever you invite me for tea. I won't call you again. Have no fear of that. Beatrice snapped her fingers, and Shannon popped out of existence. Shannon's soul had returned to the dream of her original self. While humans have many dreams in a night, they can remember none of them. The tea party in this paradise mixed in with many other dreams and vanished. The next morning, Shannon would not remember this tea party. However, Shannon's cup remained here. The witch, who had lost her guest and was standing alone, looked all the more lonely. The witch dug her fingernails into the tablecloth. That grimace as she bit her lower lip made it clear that she still hadn't solved the puzzle Shannon had left behind. Liche. Oh, there's Goth in her, in her, uh, doing all her regular stuff and everything. Riche. There's no need to worry about it, honey. A black hole opened above Shannon's empty seat, and the owner of that voice fell out of it. I do worry. Oh, come on. How could she say it with such certainty? And then Lambda's coming in. It's like, ha ah, certainty! Someone that certainty! I heard it! It's like, be quiet, Lambda. This isn't your scene.
Maybe she just wanted to get back to sleep quickly, since dawn is coming soon. What pleasure could Shannon know that I do not? What is this something that can be found in the human world but not in my paradise? I don't understand. I want to know. Thinking about complicated stuff will just feel your headache, honey. Oh, I can be of Oh, I can be of service in Shannon's place. Let's enjoy a tea party together. Oh, that face is so cute on her! Oh my god! I don't feel like it anymore. I'm bored of having tea parties with you. Oh my god! Ah, oh, she's cranky. The witch shrugged and laughed, then took a bite out of a scone. She then blew into it, and it swelled up like a balloon before finally popping. <laughs> Golden ribbons and butterflies flew out, but Beatrice didn't appear to notice. Just what is it that I do not possess? What? Oh god, I'm so sorry you guys, it's motion sickness time. Oh, okay. I guess not. Okay. Oh! I had no idea he would come back. Oh my god. Watch your step there. Thank you, Captain. Make sure you take good care of yourself. I've got a friend who sells the stuff that's supposed to be great for stiff shoulders. I'll bring you some as a sample sometime. Oh, no need to trouble yourself. But thanks for caring. Hey, Brett! How long are you gonna mess around up there? Let's go! Hey, Maria. Come down off the boat with Mama. Maria, who led Rosa by the hand, was still too young for kindergarten. Oh, baby, baby Maria time. However, she seemed to notice that her cousins, whom she rarely ever saw, were playing all around her and she was very excited. Battler and George had the energy of middle school or nearly middle school kids. These two, along with Jessica, who had met them on Nijima, were clambering about on the boat. Oh, awesome. Daijoka. Oh my god, Asumu. Oh my god. Huh, you okay, Asumu? Oh my god. Really don't like riding things, do you? Huh, <sighs> wish you did. Rudolph lent an arm to his wife, Asumu. Welcome to Rokunjima. Thank you for making such a long journey. The whole family had gathered for the conference. At this point in time, Rudolph's wife was Stella Sumu, and Angie hadn't been born. Goda and Cannon hadn't yet been employed by the Ushimiya family. And the witch's epitaph? which would toy with the family's fate, hadn't appeared yet. They probably couldn't even imagine the bizarre crime that they would encounter several years later. Frau-sama, madam. Wait, who is that? Damn, it's desynced again. Frau-sama, oh. madam. The family has arrived. Good. Oh. 
Good. Oh god, it's desynced again. Oh god damn it. Should I call for father? Please do. I will go welcome everyone. Oh, Shannon. Huh? Shannon? Who cleaned this window frame? It still has dust on it. Quickly, rush it up! Wipe it off! As you wish, madam. Oh, come on. Natsuki's making her work so hard again. Just what good, good does she find in such a limited, ulcer-inducing life? Oh my god, so Beatrice... Or rather, yeah, the original Yasuda, Beatrice, is hiding... is inside Shannon the entire time. And just, oh my god. I wanted to know. Shannon? What is it that you found? And what did you mean when you said I already knew what I was missing? Shannon? Is this something I must learn by learning about you? Oh, Thankfully, that was a short desync. What's different about the day of the family conference on Rokunjima? It's gotta be the noise! There's never this many kids around! It may have been a tension filled day for the adults. But to, but to us kids, it was a wonderful day. It's the only time we get to see all of the cousins we loved. Butler, I missed you! I missed you! I missed you! Oh, Battler! Woo! Yay! Oh, Battler! I missed you so much, Battler! Woo! Yes! Oh my god! In the summer, we'd play with our cousins on the beach. And even in the winter, there were plenty of games we could play. The family conferences were tons of fun for us. Same here. Mom was always yelling about it. There must be no mistakes. But to me, it was just the day I got to play with all my cousins. After all, there's usually nothing to do at all on Rokunjima. Back when I was still a little brat. I was always jealous of Jessica, getting to live in this huge mansion with a private beach. But now that I try putting myself in her shoes, it must have been a pretty constricting place to live. Probably. There's hardly anything on Rokunjima. No friends' houses, no next door neighbors, no neighborhood. If you think of how Jessica must have felt, you have to feel a little sad for her. That's why the family conference was so special to me. Jumping around, messing around. Felt like I was at a festival. We played tricks on each other all the time. If the adults always talked about adult things and told you to go play somewhere else. Then you were three cousins at about the same age. Of course you toss around. No, not the three of us. The four of us. But I thought Angie wasn't born yet. And Mario was still too young to play with you. You've got it wrong, Furfur. 
the cousins weren't only the only ones at the same age. Shannon Oh my god! Oh, that is so sweet! Oh my god! Oh my god! Shannon Chan was the fourth. <laughs> She was about the same age as the rest of us. Mok was always going on and on about not talking with the seven kids. Which is weird because, you know, I went to school with Shannon. And we live in the same freaking house. But Shannon and I started to get close. After all, she was the girl closest to me in age on Rokunjima. All four of us played together. We played at every family conference. Ne, Shannon. Right, Shannon? Hi. Right. Oksama I knew that Madden would scold me if she found out, but... I wouldn't have let her! You were always the one close friend I had who could understand me. Oh, thank you, Cone. And hello, Le Miz, and hello, Beatrice. Welcome to the stream. Woo! And welcome, Cone, as well. Thank you for your words, milady. I simply could not hide my shock. How she had formed, how had she formed a relationship with the children of the family, despite being only a servant. Natsuki had probably been very careful to prevent such a relationship. However, it's no surprise that Jessica, all alone in this island, would want to be friends with a kid her age. And Shannon was also alone on this island, without any friends her age. That they both understood their relationship as master and servant, they somehow managed to strike up a friendship. Then at the family conference, Jessica had introduced Shannon to George and Battler. All of the adults had their hands full with their complicated discussion in the mansion. During that time, Shannon was able to set aside her role as a servant for a little bit, acting her age with Jessica, George, and Battler. I didn't even know that Shannon had constructed this new world so quickly. As a butterfly hiding in the shadows, I observed this new world of Shannon's. That that day we ran all around the rose garden and the beach. Just running around and playing was a blast. Yep. Oh my god, Battler! How sweet of you to think of that! That is such a sweet thing to remember! Those were the only times Shannon Shannon sm smiled like a girl her age. I might have gotten a bit carried away. It's embarrassing. Bill is insanely huge now, but back then, Shannon and I were both taller and stronger than him. I just grew slowly back then. <laughs> they say that those who start late end up the toss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh my god, that's right! <laughs> oh my god, that's right! That's right, is back! From episode goddamn one! <laughs> Revenge of the 
This is very nostalgic. This spray is like extremely nostalgic. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, totally. Back then your chest was nothing like this, right? That's not true. Shannon already had plenty of womanly charm back then, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, who knows? Oh, come on! Jessica? They're fiancés. They're engaged. Give him a break. What the hell do you mean by womanly charm, you perv? Well, I was still pretty cute back then myself. That bra strap you could see through the shoulder of her summer clothing set off the lightning of youth in me. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. A oh, gross battler, did you have to mention that? Yes, yes I did. <laughs> Damn! If Battler stayed, I swear, Broken Jima would be a fucking Otome game from the perspective of Shannon. And you choose between Battler and George. Seriously! My god! I remember whispering with George Aniki that night about how bigger tits might be. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Uh, well, I, I, uh, well, uh, this is not the gentlemanly thing to do, right, Professor Layton? Uh, I believe there's been some sort of misunderstanding. Uh, all I remember was lecturing him as the older and more knowledgeable cousin about the difference between how boys and girls grow. Uh, you know, using the National Geographic, but uh, that is beside the point. And so, rather than the dirty talk between cousins late at night, it was instead a sign of healthy growth and, um... Adorable Jessica Sprite. Yeah, I remember all of us cousins talking about stuff like that until midnight. About how apparently someone in the next class had kissed someone else. Wow, how you held hands with a girl you liked at summer camp. And about so and so who you thought probably liked you and stuff like that. Oh my god! Precious memories. Ah! Oh, damn it, it's so embarrassing, it makes me shiver. Isn't that nice? Another sweet page in the book of adolescence. The most pure love comes when boys and girls just not noticing each other. That simple pure desire just to be around someone with the opposite sex. The noble first loves. Just wonderful. A bunch of kids thinking and talking about the world of love! Shannon, wouldn't you know? Uh, did, did, did that sort of thing really happen? <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't play dumb. <laughs> I bet that was Beatrice. She probably swapped out with Shannon, didn't she? You were the most absorbed and curious of all of us, sitting there to leaving your ears turn red. <laughs> That's right. Shannon got the best Kamato to boot it. So no one could be surprised. Oh my God! If my theory is true, oh my God, then this must have been a terrifyingly terrifying conversation for Shannon. If my theory is true, oh my God, this isn't funny at all, is it? Oh my God, then this must have been an absolutely terrifying conversation for her. Oh my god, Shannon, baby! Oh my god. Shannon always played dumb the most, even though she was the most interested. <laughs> she was the biggest boy, but they are! <laughs> oh god. Oh god, they have. Oh god, oh god, oh god! <laughs> Oh god, Shannon! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god, Shannon! Oh god! That must have supposed to have been a terrifying conversation for her. Uh, that's not true! That's not true! I hate you, my lady! そう。いつもこんな感じ。いや、<笑><笑> We'd be whispering about something dirty, and whenever we hear the footsteps of the adults coming by, we jump under the covers and pretend to be sleeping. Yeah, I remember the Like some school field trip! Those times we all drove under the covers at once. It felt like some sort of unspoken rule, like a strange sense of unity. I really like that feeling. Well, anyway, that's not all we talked about. There was a lot more than that. We really did enjoy our youth to the fullest. Oh my god. And what is this? Shannon? Is this that fun thing of the human world? Is this the incomprehensible messing around? Is this incomprehensible messing around? The thing that you found. A bunch of kids gathered together, playing stupid games and talking about trivial matters. Is this the human pleasure you found that surpasses the pleasure of witches? Hi. Yes. Doesn't it look like fun to you? I won't call it boring. 
However, I could not see to such a vulgar game can compare to my paradise. Where all wishes can be granted. Interacting with people is a lot of fun. Of course, I also think your world is fun. But even so, I choose this world. I don't understand. I don't understand at all. Beatrice held her head as though she was having a headache. But no matter how much she grimaced, she couldn't think of an answer. Tell me. What is it you found with this vulgar playing? Do you want to know? I do. Love. Yeah! Exactly what I thought it was. L love? Here. It's the Queen book I promised. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to borrow it. That's okay, you can keep it, Shannon Chan. I've already read it. I can't accept this. It was probably expensive. It's just something I got for a few hundred yen at a bazaar. Don't worry about it, we're rich, remember? I'd rather if you read it quickly so we can talk about it. Oh my god. It's fun to talk about this sort of stuff with you, Shannon Chan. Yes! It's fun for me too. Mystery it's much more fun to read mystery novels with two people instead of alone. I like talking about it and imagining all kinds of things. With mystery novels, reading's only half the fun. <gasps> oh my god, you are truly kindred spirits. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! My theory is that you only really enjoy it when you talk with other people who've read it too. Our relationship began when we read that we both realized that we both read mystery novels. We were both surprised and very interested to find that the other not only read tons of mystery novels, but read them very thoroughly. Ever since then, it's been like this. Separate from the games we played with all the cousins, the two of us met together for some time alone. Oh my god! At first, it was sort of like a contest to see who knew more than the other. Oh my god! Are you serious? My fucking theories! However, eventually this turned into respect for how much the other had read and how deeply they were able to think about it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Respect, trust, those emotions made our friendship even stronger. Of course, all of that had still fallen within the category of friendship, but we we're still slightly aware of the fact that the other was of the opposite sex. Thank you for a relationship that was charming or youthful. Or maybe you could call it exciting. However, we were still at the age where calling us young men and women would probably be a bit too gracious. 
Of course, we didn't know a thing about love. So we couldn't understand that exciting feeling in our chests, both bitter and sweet, that we only felt when we were alone together. Oh my god! <laughs> However, we realized that there was some unknown emotion hidden deep behind that feeling. And as our hearts raced, we had our hand upon the door. That was the exciting age we were at. Oh my god! <laughs> so, at some point, our discussions about mystery novels became just an excuse for us meeting alone. There aren't many mystery novels that care much about the why done it. Why done it? The why done it? You mean the culprit's motive? Yeah. Suiri Shosets de Sagrebeki, Mitsuno Rontema. Who done it? How done it? So stay, why done it? There are three points you need to figure out in mystery novels. The who done it, the how done it, and the why done it. A lot. A lot of mysteries deal with the first two, but surprisingly few worry about the final one. Well, I know about many works that take great care to have the culprit confess his motive after he's been found out. <laughs> but it has to be something you can reason out before the culprit confesses, or it doesn't count. Personally, I think it's unfair for a person who supposedly didn't have a motive com to commit the crime. Unless it's possible to reason his or her motive out. Who done it? Who's the culprit? How done it? How did he commit the crime? Why done it? Why did he commit the crime? Why commit the crime? There are a ton of works that ask about who the culprit is. And what tricks they used. In fact, almost all are like that. However, I don't think there are many novels that ask you to figure out the motive. Good point! Who, how, why no no nakade. That might be the most neglected of the three. Why done it? 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 Why done No, I'm not saying they're boring. It's more like they're missing the most important part. The most important part is missing? The heart. The heart is missing. The heart? The heart? Damn, Thatler, you're smooth. Even at freaking 13 years old, you are a smooth operator. Holy shit! Damn, Thatler! <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> I think the human heart is a really important thing. If a person's gonna decide to commit murder, plan it out, get everything ready, and actually carry it out. You'd need an incredibly strong force of the heart. The heart is what moves people. Damn, Butler. How smooth is this young little boy? Holy fuck, jeez. In other words, only the heart can kill a person. When an emotional upheaval grows strong enough to make a person want to kill, the result is tragedy called murder. 
and we turn it around? Does this mean that the true way to close in on the crime is by searching for the heart that brings about the tragedy of murder? Only the heart can kill a person. So if a person has been killed, you must search for the heart. That's what he's saying. That's why. I can't really enjoy novels where the culprit is. Just a homicidal maniac who kills for fun. Then, you like novels that so a strong enough movement of the heart to lead to murder? That's right. And my favorite ones are the novels that let you reason that out. As he spoke, he looked back at me and smiled. Before today, I used to like novels that focused on exposing tricks. However, I decided to look for novels like the one he recommended in the future. I don't like I don't like neglecting the heart. The heart is what makes people move. I think you're right. This isn't limited to the mystery genre. All humans are moved by their hearts all the time. Being able to notice the heart is what allows for interactions between people. No interactions between hearts. None of us humans can live on our own. And yet we have no way of peeking into the hearts of, hearts of others. That's why every meeting between people is a mystery of the heart. Finding those, reasoning about them, and understanding each other is the key to interactions between people and hearts. The two of us are here all alone, talking together about mysteries. And through that, we are searching out each other's hearts, speaking of the heart's mysteries. I want you to feel about- OH MY GOD! I want you to feel about me the way I feel about you. OH MY GOD! We're both searching, trying to figure out the depths of the other's heart. In this mystery of love. Oh! oh my god! Oh, look how late it's gotten. I wonder if Aniki and the others are waiting for us. I wonder if this is the conversation that George peeked in on. Yes, we should probably go back soon. Shannon Chan to Hana Stirto. At the Yumani Jikanga Sugichiman. Damn, Battler, you are a smooth operator. Time seems to fly by when I'm talking with you, Shannon Chan. He seemed to be speaking the words of my heart. Like, seriously, man, I don't know. But damn it, Battler. I think you're, damn, he's like a natural flirt or something, my god. Like doing it without even realizing it, apparently. <laughs> we were thinking the same thing, so the same words came out. I wish we could talk together like this forever. <sighs> I hate clocks. Same here. <sighs> Talking about this stuff with you is the most fun part of coming to Rokunjima. When I saw that his smiling eyes were looking right at me, I turned away. Oh my god! Oh my god! I couldn't let him see my suddenly red face. <laughs> Only I could leave this place. 
たくさんの本を読めるのに。I'll be able to read so much more. Hello, Archie. Hello, Zia san. Hello, Zekuto. Welcome to the stream. The bookshop on Nijima that I go to and the bookshop he goes to in the city are on completely different scales. We're talking Walden books versus Barnes and Nobles. Of course, Walden books is long dead now, but. The book exchange between the two of us had become completely one sided, with him giving me all the books. Sharon Chama. How long do you plan to be a servant, Shannon Chan? I don't know. If someday you decide to quit, if I do, No way. No fucking way. Oh, my God, what? what? Oh, my God. Over to my place. He said it almost carelessly. Maybe he was a bit embarrassed since he laughed weakly and blushed a little. So, Sana, and then, <gasps> God damn you, Battler! This meant everything to her! This meant everything to her! And then, we won't need to run, worry about run, time running out anymore. So this ne. Ah, that that's right. Zutto, ishi ni iraremasu ne. Oh my god! We could be together as long as we wanted. The little secret dates on this island only happened a few times a year. And even when they did happen, it was only for a short, uncertain period of time. It won't work over the phone or with letters. We can only talk about our mystery when we're standing together like this. I know that day will come someday. You think it will? Yeah. I'm certain of it. <laughs> certain? Why is he certain? Ah, certainty, certainty! Okay, jeez, oh my god. Oh my god. When that day comes,
come for you riding a white horse. <laughs> After saying this, he turned away. Oh my god. Probably too proud to show me his blushing cheeks. But even without seeing, I knew what his face looked like. To come riding on a white horse, uh, isn't that, uh, like, isn't that like a prince riding a white horse? So what exactly does that mean? Uh, uh, does it mean you're going to be my prince? Oh my god! <laughs> My mind was going blank, so I couldn't just read it out as mystery of love. Even though it was all plain and simple. <sighs> I, I wonder when that day will come. Anytime you're ready. <gasps> oh my god! My heart skipped a beat. It was so sweet, yet it hurt. <sighs> Any time's good for me. Valor, you can't just say things like this! This is your life we're talking about, Shannon Chan. You should think about it carefully before you decide. And once you made up your mind, I'll respect your decision, no matter when you make it. Uh, 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 okay. Butler, how could you just say something like this so seriously? <sighs> and then just forget her completely. Keep on waiting until that day comes. <sighs> if only I had been a bit more foolish and courageous. I could have said then and there that I was already prepared and asked him to take away from me away from this island right away. But I couldn't say it. I had to think carefully about my future for both our sakes. My head was filled with pointless, senseless thoughts. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With his back still to me, he scratched his head and laughed. I knew he was doing this out of embarrassment, so I could clearly tell what, it, what his expression might have been. In the same way, he must have realized what my face looked like. We're both puzzle solvers of love. We theorize about each other's love, solving each other's mysteries. 
Thanks for giving me time. You have all the time in the world. I'd feel bad. If I kept you waiting. If I kept you waiting too long. <laughs> so I decided. Nope. I should say that I will decide. I don't mean that I'll quit my job today right now. <sighs> oh my god! Oh my god! God, Shannon, my God. I don't mean that I'll quit my job today right now. Yes. One year. One year from now. If a year after now, you still feel like coming for me on a white horse. And me too. If I still like you a year from now, I'd like to dedicate the rest of my life to you. <laughs> Oh God! One year from now, right here. I'd like to make my decision. A year, huh? That sounds good. Spring, Spring, summer, autumn, winter. That's a good amount of time to look honestly into your heart. Next year. Please come for me, okay? Yep. He responded to my cowardly determination. With a quick, strong answer. Fucking knew all Valor! God damn it! And Rudolph ruined everything! I'll be waiting for that day to come. Yes. I'll be waiting too. Make sure you come, okay? Yeah. Don't forget. Fucking hell, she even told you not to forget. Come here next year, okay? Ah. Yeah. I'll come, that's for certain. I guess I was slacking here. I'll meet you here. That's for certain. Uh -huh. I see. So, this emotion that feels like sweet suffocation is love. It is an emotion I do not know. What I do not have. Though my magic can grant any wish. Though my paradise can grant any wish. That thing I cannot have. That incomprehensible emotion. That burns like fire. And yet madly one wants to hold it close. All I know is that no matter how great a witch I might become. I cannot create this emotion. It must be given by another person. For the first time, I realized that I wasn't all powerful, and I knew what Shannon had discovered in the world of humans. This emotion, it's just too much. 
She feels it too. Oh my god. Once you forget it, once you felt it, there's no forgetting it, is there? Shannon, you win. Love, is it? It may be the most important element and the one that I lack. Shannon, I'll watch and see how your love develops. So please teach me more and more about this new emotion. Oh my god! seen you in quite a while oh my god you guys I I think this is a good place to stop for today this chapter yeah I this has been an unforgettable night and an unforgettable section of the story. I thank you all so much for experiencing this story with me. Seriously. I am never going to forget this, ever. Ever. I'm like, Vadler! I just... Oh, God. Jeez. See you all in two days for the next part of the story. I'll tell you guys so long. Farewell. Avoid a saying good night. You are all the absolute sweetest of hearts. See ya. <laughs>